We're here to talk about Andor. Uh, I'm not episode... even show that Star Wars has put out live action and might be the greatest show they've put out. Uh, oh, no, no, it's still number one. But is the greatest product that I think they, they've put out into live action. Mine oh, is absolutely. Movie. This is... This is great. I, I, I have to admit, I was thinking hard today about what last week's episode about, because this week's, you know, it all flows together, to really, yeah. doesn't it? It really just flows together. Nine and ten. Well, they, you know, we've kind of said that the first three episodes were like one movie, mm -hmm. uh, four, and five, six, one more. movie. And this probably, you know, this last four has been kind of building up to this big escape um, yeah. from the prison. Um and I reckon you could gauge this whole little sequence, particularly the prison sequence. If you just wanted to do an outline of it, all you have to do is grab screenshots of Andy Circus's face at different points. Man, that man, that, that, just, might, that, man might be, that man might be one of the greatest living actors that is not yes. a fully appreciated in his non-CGI yes. format. Yes. Intense. It is so intense. He oh, is great. He's, he just, yes. you just see him falling apart. You know, he's, he comes on the scene in those early episodes and he's like, we're going to do this. We're going to build build this. And I heard him saying in an interview, he believes they're making the Death Star there. He believes that they're making. I think so too. I mean, it makes the most amount of sense, you know, so, you know, to be able to, for the work that they're doing and the labor, which goes back. I will say it every single time we talk about Andor. The greatest part about this show is that we get to see how the Empire works in a way yep. that is actually interesting. Yes. Yeah, and how he just he just falls apart. He goes from being super sure of everything, going to get out in so many days, to realizing that no one gets out of here. Yeah. Now we're going to make this big break. And there's our man Andor. Cassie is just sitting there playing devil's advocate. He's just poking around, isn't he? Like, he's just... I know, he's funny because if you watch this series, I know he was prominent in the first three episodes. He was the protagonist. In some ways, he kind of, he's kind of one of the guys in these last couple of storylines. Like, when they were doing the big heist, you know, he was definitely in there doing everything and we're seeing everything through his perspective. But there are other stories and other characters... Right, and then in this one, it's kind of yes, it's he's in there doing his thing, but it's you know a lot of it's anti circus, but he's still just plugging away like he's, and when the time comes to get stuff done, he gets stuff done like he he pulls out those blasters during the escape, and he doesn't miss much like he you know what I mean like but he's that's the he's got what it takes right no I mean but I think that was never a loss because there's a reason why he was the 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 level boss like. He's been one of those guys that seems like he's been there for a long enough time. He knows the game. He's stern. You know, your your, your regular um, drill sergeant kind of guy. So for him to be about that action was never a surprise to me. What I'm glad that they didn't do was to do that regular trope where the person is uh, so loyal to the position that you have to work so hard to convince him even when it seems most obvious and at least whenever especially episode nine which is the part where everybody you know loves at the end of it where it's like that strong realization where the evidence is clear and it's not that he needs more convincing it's more that it's just simply him coming to the terms and then quickly recognizing what needs to be done from that point and so kind of skipping over that whole trope because Obviously, at the beginning, I would be exactly like him. It's like, yo, you don't know Ish. Even whenever the guys were signing about the other levels, like, yo, of course you don't know Ish. Uh, just do your time and let me out. This is all I'm trying to do. Let me do my time. I'm going to count it down, and then I'm gone. Even though the idea of 200 shifts seems also kind of wild. That's like, yeah. depending on how many shifts you have per day. Like, so it's a day yeah. and a night shift. So you're talking literally just 200 days. Let's just go 200 yeah. days. Well, that's two thirds of a year. That's crazy. Yeah. So you're just like, okay, you 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 know this, and and of course your eye is on the prize and doing that. So mm. his character reasoning made sense. There was nothing that seemed like the intent of trying to create dramatics to make dramatics. And so whenever no. then came no. and then that next part, whenever we you know episode ten and we get the escape and uh, him jumping into the action, but still being nervous. 
I, I'm glad. I guess it's good they did a little bit of a nerve thing for yeah, yeah, dressing the people. Uh, I mean, yeah. it was just it's honestly, honestly, without being too hyperbolic, this might be one of the best writing acting jobs that have come out of the Star Wars series because there was a lot of monologuing and not just included with Andy Serkis's character, but mm. with um. Uh, the redheaded guy and and uh, Scarguard's character, like this, might be some of the best acting I think I've seen yeah. in Star Wars, and amongst the best within the this current Disney uh, uh, phasing of universes that they've created. Like hands down, emotional, yeah. oh. tactical. Uh, it felt almost like a play to some extent in in their monologue. They have the best speeches. Yes. Yeah, Mark Rose. That, yeah. Um, Andy Serkis and um, Skarsgård's speech, <laughs> both of them, in one show. Yeah. Ah. Like, yes. you don't... Skarsgård I didn't realize really how little you see that. You don't see that very much. Like, a good monologue. You see yeah. back and forth, but you don't see a good monologue that doesn't seem like you're hamming it up or that yeah. you're trying to go for an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's... I mean, let's talk about Stellan Skarsgård's little spiel at the end, you know, because it's it's a fascinating spiel about how he realizes a bit like that guy from that movie, uh, sorry, that TV show Twenty Four. I think it was a Jack Breyer, <laughs> where yeah. you get these characters like him and like Skarsgård who says, you know what, we do the dirtiest of work, right? We are bad people, and we have to be bad people to get good outcomes. Mm. And we are going to absorb this into our soul. It's going to destroy us personally. And what does he say somewhere? The, the paraphrase that we're going to to light a fire that will that will kill us, but we'll see a sunrise which we will never see. Right. Like, um, so he and and I, I have to go back and watch that whole scene again. But he talks about letting fifty people die somewhere. For example. Yeah. Uh, for the 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 whenever the the soldiers that would be. Uh, Looking at the ship, uh, at the yeah. Uh, so he's just—he knows, he knows that he's a bad egg, and he knows he's even been a bad egg to this guy. You know, threatening his children, or his yeah. child, like oh, his oh, newborn it, child at that too. Newborn to everyone, you know. This is such a great character, and yet he's, and we know he's going to succeed. Like, and we know he's, you know, that the, the rebellion will rise up and they will win. Right. But he's a guy who's going to just destroy his, shred his soul, yeah, his morals f to see that happen, you know. And ah, oh, you know, what a powerful scene, you know. No, I, I, I love it. But it also established the fact for me that uh, that's not Leia. That's his partner up there. I'm. I, her na Do you know what her name is though? Leia. <laughs> Cle so they so here, they're they're messing with this though. You have to. They're still messing with this. <laughs> I will agree that that is probably not Leia. But they're definitely playing with this on that one. She looks yeah. like her. I think the other day, yeah. I think she even had the same hair. Claire. Yeah, oh, my God. Soon someone's going to walk in the door. Hi, I'm Kluke. It's Kluke <laughs> Hi Walker. You know? So so why, why they're doing that, I don't know. But you, I, I'm pretty ready to concede that while I'm onto something, I'm probably not coming to the right conclusion. Because... Um, and so I'm curious about what she's still quite mysterious. I'm still curious to see what's going to happen with her. Um, the other one, I the other conversation I thought was pretty crazy. It's been overlooked a bit. Um, is the conversation between that sleazy financial guy and Mon Mothma? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She thinks she's going. She hates the guy, right? It's and it's easy to see why. Yeah. Uh, once again, beautifully played. Um, we hate the guy as soon as he walks in the room. Uh, but despite the fact he takes on all this kind of nice, um, you know, he looks good and he looks God. polite. You know, you know this guy's full of shit. But she expects it's just going to be a political favor. And then he goes like full Yo, he goes, House he of he the Dragons, crazy. Game of Thrones. Let's so organize. Your, let's your organize. 13, right? Your yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh. Just an introduction. <laughs> oh. I thought I thought we're back in Game of Thrones. We're arranging marriages now. We're back in the Game of Thrones. All they have to do is 
be sisters or cousins and that it's complete. It is complete. You know? <laughs> but to <laughs> see her face, to see her face, she's like, get out. Like, but and then, I reckon, yeah. I reckon she's still going to go for it later on. She says, I'm not even thinking about it. And he says, that's the first untrue thing you've said. It's like, yeah. oh, that's a bad I reckon, side. Yeah, I don't I know. I mean, the kid might be just like, Super nice, very good looking, perfect match for this girl. But oh my gosh, she's in trouble now. Like she's, but it will it will never matter because of course the ulterior motive is to be able to have I guess that blood connection either into the wealth or into the Senate. Yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah. it's it's even is even if the 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 son is unaware, which I doubt he would be. Or if he is unaware, he'd still be very culpable to being uh, persuaded by his dad, who seems like he's a guy who knows how to get what he wants, uh, oh, to say the that, least. That's, that's him again. Br- brilliant scene, but just, I, oh my I, gosh. I loved it. I was just like, yo, let's go. Again, they're giving us surprises. I mean, they're not uncommon, but it's good enough surprises that it changes the trope because I knew for a fact there was going to be something that, he was going to ask, and she's going to be indignant because the entire, I mean, one, it's a very common kind of scene. And two, you know, you could feel it. But the fact that they called it out in the initial where it wasn't like, oh, you're going to have to owe me a favor later on. And instead, it's like, no, you're going to have to make me part of the family. Man. Ah, how much does this money mean to you? We're going to like, be family as an She investor. doesn't really have much of a tan to start with, but boy, did she turn whiter than white <laughs> after he said that. She just... I don't blame her. So, um, so look now. There's two episodes to go. So, where are we heading with this? It looks like they, like, he might go back home to his his mother figure, um, his no, guardian. I don't think so. I don't well, think it looks so. probably go back for the money you left behind. Well, I don't know if he did leave any money behind, did he? Yeah, in the bathroom. Oh, and that. Uh, oh, that okay. So he might. Yeah, he might go back. Yes, you're right. He might go back and get those credits he left in the bathroom. But it looks to me like he is going to go back to that home planet. I forget its name because all the other characters are kind of hanging out there, including the you know the Empire is waiting around, and so is so is the um, the people who did the heist with. Mm-hmm. So it that just seems to me because there's only one scene in the movie in so today's today's episode that's in that place, and it looks like it's kind of reminding us this place is here. There's people there waiting for him to come back. So I would th- that would be my presumption that he's going to have to go back there and it's going to be a big shooter. Plus his woman's there who's just had her brain fried. Like, remember that was last week with the yeah with the, the sound the, torture the, using the sound of tortured children. As hey, torture, which is hey. apparently it's, it's, it's people do it. Apparently, it's people have done it to torture people. They've used that yeah. kind of thing. Really? Yeah. But um, so to me, I think that's where the next two episodes. I, I'm having my last guess about Clayla has kind of a bit flat, but I'm ready to put it my head on the chopping block again and saying I reckon that's where we might end up with our big finale. I mean, now that you have like that one guy, uh, what's his name? Cyril. Is it Cyril? Yeah. Karn uh, wanting to like hook up. With- <laughs> oh, what's her face? <laughs> How random was that? <laughs> oh, she, he's stalking her. Why no. would you stalk her? Oh, my like, gosh. I was like, where did that even come from? Like, wh- wait, hold on. What? <laughs> She freaks me out, and even when she was freaking them out, she still. F- <laughs> You're just waiting for her to like drop the other hammer and just like murder, murder everybody, just She's... out of. Because <laughs> I do remember last week's. Because I'm, I'm trying to remember last week's episode, and I do remember she was kind of like, I thought to myself last week, ah, uh, she's not an anti-hero. She's a baddie, baddie. Like I think. Yeah. When they were talking about killing people, and I think she was doing stuff, and that's right. When she tortured the girl, I thought, "No, you're not an anti-hero. You're you're not, you know, someone I sympathise with. You're a baddie, but a good She's one." She's a fascist. She's yeah. a very good fascist. 
So yeah. she cops one, cops but a blaster be, in the head. I won't be upset. I'd be super pissed. I'd be super pissed if they try and do redemption arc on her in the sense of like she reveals to be like another underground spy, uh, led by. It. I'd be like, bro, now you're just Mary suing us at, at this point. Well, the rumor is, the rumor is some people are saying that because we haven't heard this for a while. We haven't heard about. Cassie and or sister that we yeah. heard about. Some people I mean, saying yeah. that she will be his sister. And I'm thinking... Nah, uh, man, that would be a, another one of those situations where it'd be the worst kind of Mary Sue. And I also have to make the assumption that she's not going to live through this because we never had any interaction with her in Rogue One. Not that they knew it at the time, but yeah. no interaction in Rogue One. Obviously, we don't see anything in the, A New Hope or anybody connected to her in A New yeah. Hope. So... I, I have to assume that whatever it is, her demise is is come. Like this is the interesting part about this show, is because of the fact. What's her name again? What's 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 blonde hair lady's name again? Um, that really nasty piece of work. Um, I'm, okay, we're all going to look for it now. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> I've been trying we're to do. All, it. Ah. What is it? I'm looking on Rotten Tomatoes. It's I'm not putting it up there. I don't know why. Come on, Rotten Tomatoes. Well, Rotten Tomatoes. You're Rotten Tomatoes. I can. IMDb is making it entirely too difficult. Anyways, so to the point that uh, uh, it, it is, it's like they. What was I trying to say? Oh, yeah. It's hard. So hard. To be able to properly uh, 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 predict the future because of the fact of what we already know about what the future has to hold for every for yeah. most people, so it, it almost feels like you have to assume either everybody dies or like this is the most hidden group of people afterwards who didn't end yeah. up dying in Rogue One. Well, or anything to that effect, with the with the people in the Empire, the Empire is really big, and she could easily be just. Taken to an outer rim planet and you know, working the, true. working the phones and whatever you know, she <laughs> get a demotion. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you got to presume some of these cat, whether that happens here or not, I don't know. I, I presume Stellan Skarsgård's character uh, is not going to get out of this alive. No, no, um, I he's too. Really has to say he's too prominent, again. and he's um, he's too prominent in this series. He's too. Um, too involved that they just can't let him just walk away, right? And, and not see him again in, you know, uh, Rogue One or anything like that. So his his days are numbered, right? Um, but the, I guess the thing with the empires is is you never know. They could just shove him into a, as I said, send him to the outer rim to answer phones and maybe clean desks. You know, become janitors, Mirror. and then we could see, and then we might see them again pop up in. I don't know. Some Some down, but if they do it down the line, like in episode, what they want to try and do for episodes 9, 10, 11, or not 9, 10, 11, uh, but yeah, yeah, not, 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 not 10, 11, 12, like they're going to be at least 70 years older than what they yeah. would be at this point in time. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I think there's a season two coming up, so they still yeah, might there get is. A, there is, there is. There so, I mean, let's hope people start watching this. Let's hope people start actually watching this because the, the viewing numbers are not high. I mean, everyone, all the fans are going apeshit about it, but it's still not getting the big numbers. So that's the thing that I, that's the other part of this. I like, you have this entire show where, uh, and, and you know what? I, I think this comes to uh, maybe a slightly different conversation, but I'm going to piece it all together into where people keep saying the state of Disney and uh, and the filmographies that they put out for this last three years in this phase, I feel like people have complained so much about why about Marvel and Star Wars, Star Wars more so, but Marvel being not up to par to what they've expected, and it's because I think that this phase has been testing. Like Disney has finally had more than enough money. To be like, we need to figure out how to tell a different story uh, or, or the same story in a different way that it makes it so that it doesn't feel like you're just getting a repeat of everything that you had at the beginning, which everybody was uncomfortable with 
initially, like you got the grounded version, then it got of Iron Man, and then it kind of got weird. Uh, and I, then it was like expansive. But I think we've been seeing Disney try and test storytelling, which is why we're getting like sequels to movies that didn't necessarily do well. Like we're getting Eternals too, still. Uh, Miss Marvel too. Um, you know, all these shows that were mm, in terms of viewership, but I think they were allowed to be more creative because they finally had the budget to be able to be creative. But it also stands to the fact that whenever you have a show like Andor, after all the nonsense that people have complained about Star Wars movies and how incomplete and how inconsistent the story is and how not Star Wars it felt, you finally have a show that holds to basically all the standards that you need it to be. It's a slow burn. It's an engaging story. It is an epic in multiple formats. They, they literally gave us are giving us three and a half different movies within yeah. this show. And it is the lowest viewed show. And people can say it might be wear out, but I genuinely think it's because people don't actually know what they want. And what seems to be so familiar seems to actually just be like, no, this is basic or it's too slow or it's not. And it's it'd be the same as the same people who would say, I love Game of Thrones up until episode seven, uh, up until season seven. I love Game of Thrones. I love Game of Thrones. But the same people that said, if I went back and watched Game of Thrones again, I couldn't watch the show. All right. Yeah, I yeah I think with this one, I think you know it's funny we look at the views and we um and are about well did this this property like traditional filmmaking or television shows so yes. let's look at Black Adam right not the sh- Black Adam um, will probably not make its money back right right it will not break even now in typical movie terms that's a fail right right. They want to make their money back. This one probably won't. Someone's lost money. Boo-hoo. Off we go. Right. Um, but there's another... But when you're putting a universe together, when you're putting together a universe, that becomes another... Particularly when you're putting content on TV, that right. becomes another standard. Did Black Adam make an impact, the character? Did the mm-hmm. character make an impact... Did this those and not his character, other characters, so that when you put Black Adam back into another movie, he's going to generate an audience. Right. All right. So it's not let's is it gonna be is it an important part of the, the universe building? So let's look at the Thor movies, the first two Thor movies. Yeah, widely regarded as the worst in the first three, four phases of Marvel. But in the long run the character of Thor has become well loved, mm-hmm. and is is one. And those movies eventually started making money. You can only do that if you have a universe. Exactly. You can only do that if you have a universe. So, She Hulk. I didn't think She Hulk was all that great. I didn't. Think, but, but will I see? Do I want to see Jane Walters again? Yes. yes. <laughs> so in that way, it's a success because right. even if the ratings weren't great or the feedback or the whatever is not so great. There's a second criteria now for these movies. Right. And that is, is it bringing value to the universe and the brand? Right. Um, and I think, I think S- S- Star Wars, you know, had produced a, you know, a very uneven second season of The Mandalorian. You know, or what some people call the book, you know, sorry, the book of Boba Fett. <laughs> you mean the, uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh, the inconsistent second and a half season? <laughs> yeah, there's the Freudian slip. Everyone was like, "Was that the was that the Mandalorian? Or was that the Book of Boba Fett?" I think that uh, the um, Kenobi, the Ben Kenobi thing, left people yeah. a little jaded, and I think the brand was suffering. Yeah, and or to me will inject credibility back into it, right. if not by the big numbers, by that hardcore fan base, which we're getting really, really annoyed. Fair enough. Yeah. And, and now we're about to use these guys. Um, I forgot who is it? The, the directors, um, the the guy, it's not Philip and Lord, it's um, uh, Phil, Phil Lord and no, it's not Phil and Lord. Um, it's uh, ah, oh, they just did another series. Ah, oh, crap, I can't even remember. They're about to do the uh, the Star Wars, the next set of Star Wars trilogies. Um, yeah. um, yeah. but yeah. It sets up to be able to make those now much more spectacular 
and which is yeah. what they have to, which is what the end game is. Like, can you make that and universal experiential that bit bigger? And in a sense, it's going to do, hopefully for the rest of Star Wars, what Iron Man did for Marvel. Now, obviously, Iron Man set up a beautiful template right off the bat, straight off the bat. So that became the standard, and Marvel has now consistently tried to meet that standard. Now, unfortunately, Marvel, Star Wars kind of reached a height probably with Empire Strikes Back, in the opinion of someone like myself, and mm -hmm. struggling to maintain it. But suddenly there's a something's propped up with good television, good writing, good yeah. character, good story, and suddenly there's a boost of energy. The brand has got something back in it, not... Probably, you know, everyone got everyone excited. Probably not the biggest numbers, but I think it's injected something back into this franchise that could easily see, you know, hopefully when whoever's writing Kenobi Season 2 or... Let's say, okay, let's make our plot make sense. Let's yeah. make our secondary characters... I hope Marvel's listening. Probably not. <laughs> let's make... Because I think this is Marvel's problem with a lot of their TV shows. Secondary characters being weak and that is one thing that andor has done exceptionally well secondary characters are strong and they're interesting now also netflix's um daredevil secondary characters strong and interesting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i hope again i've said it before i'll say it again i hope the makers of the next daredevil are watching andor and thinking we can make adult serious um Marvel TV shows without swearing, without sex, without super violence to still make this a PG Disney show. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe! 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 Oh, God.